Hi folks, welcome back to the uh, West Virginia 5 Radio Lab. Today I'd like to talk about a little uh, software-defined radio I picked up on uh, eBay or Fleabay there. It's just about under $200, but um, what's pretty neat about it is this little guy can let me see the entire HF band from 0 to 30 megahertz all in one spectrum. Uh, that's pretty darn impressive. Basically, that means 32 megahertz of data is streaming to your computer and you can see the whole spectrum in real time. That's pretty darn amazing for that price point. All right, we'll go over the features here. So basically, you got two plugs. You got the H plug for HF and you got the V plug for VHF. So I'm going to be focusing on the H plug here. Basically, uh, got some attenuators, goes into one low-pass filter, and then is instantly digitized by this AD analog to digital converter. No, fil uh, no mixers, no nothing, just straight, direct sampling. Now, there is no bank of bandpass filters here, so you probably want to consider buying something like that to uh, put in front of here if you need it. And I'll get into cases when you... Uh, will need filters and will you when you will not All right, I'm using SDR console. You got to use uh, this version of the software or any later version would probably work So we got to uh, get the driver for this thing um, So go to this uh, just Google SDR console. You'll get this uh, web page uh, click into the uh, radios get to here and then click the uh, driver basically we got to download the driver for it uh, scroll down on that website, you'll get this guy here. Click the um, Windows 10 drivers. We'll save a zip file. So save that zip file to your C drive. Obviously, unzip it. Remember uh, where you put it. All right, so now your little receiver came in the mail. Uh, plug it into your computer. Uh, open up File Explorer here. Uh, find this PC. Get that this PC. Right-click on it. Go down to Properties. This should hopefully pop up. Click Device Manager. Now, I will say to really see the full 32 megahertz in real time, um, you're going to need a PC of this kind of spec, uh, if not better. So if you got some Windows XP, hit the Stop button right now. It ain't going to work. All right, so go into Device Manager, and when that thing is plugged in, you'll see it showing up as this Westbridge guy. Um, that's not correct, so we're just going to right-click on that and say Update Driver. Uh, you go to Browse My Computer, all right, and then you click the uh, Browse button, and you basically browse to where you saved off this Cypress firmware, and this is what I did here. So. You go all the way down into the X64, and then you say, that's it, and then you click Next. All right, then you'll see Windows has successfully loaded the Cypress uh, USB driver. All right, this, this is what worked for me. You have to unplug the, uh, the receiver, restart the computer. Once the computer is rebooted, plug the uh, RX receiver back into the USB 3 port. It needs to be a USB 3. All right, open up SDR console. Do this select radio thingy there. Uh, you'll get this popping up. Click the definitions. Then you got to click search. And then you scroll down, find the receiver that you want. Hopefully it will say found it. You click add. And then you click this save button. I know it's quite a bit. All right, so now it's in there. Now you can highlight it, select the bandwidth. You can select um, 32. I think the lowest you can do is 1 megahertz. So if you don't have a supercomputer, you can set it to 1 megahertz, and that should probably be okay. Once you got that set to the bandwidth you want, click the Start button, and there you go. So this is looking at SDR console right now. And we are basically looking from uh, 0 hertz all the way to 30 megahertz. And you might ask, well, what is this line? Um, that's my signal generator sweeping the whole receiver. And you can see that that power level is 
pretty constant through that whole bandwidth. There's no dips, dropouts, etc. So that's pretty uh, interesting. So this all blob here, that's the whole AM broadcast band. That's 500 to 1700 kilohertz. You got the uh, some shortwave stuff here and look at this spur crap over here, yeah. You know what that is? That's all the nice solar panels by me. Ain't that nice? Well, the good news is that all goes away at the uh, nighttime because the, um, well, the solar panels aren't working at night. All right, time for some bad news. So here's the whole bandwidth with nothing plugged into the antenna port. What do we got here? Looks like some spurs. So these are probably uh, a crappy power regulator chips or the uh, oscillator PLL is somehow leaking in here. But, you know, for 200 bucks, I kind of expected this. Thankfully, it's not too bad. And they're at places in the band where, you know, I don't really care about. Here, zoomed in here, you see certain uh, shortwave stations. Again, I'm doing this, I recorded this at two in the afternoon. So, you know, 11 megahertz was probably the active band at that time. And uh, this is the final final shot here. I just think, so there you go. A, um, a basically a snapshot of the entire zero to 30 megahertz uh, band. Now, what I was talking about earlier, whether you, whether you need filters or not, this is why this plot is uh, so critical for that. Um, let's say you want to uh, pick up signals better in the 80 meter band. Um, so you say, I'm going to go get a low noise amplifier. And that says it has a, a gain of 30 dB. Well, you can see here, if we zoom in there, that is strongest signals coming in here. And this is on a loop, so dipole is even going to be worse. Um, they are around minus 50, say, dBm, right? So if I put a 30 dB amplifier, you got to ensure that the highest signal for the entire spectrum is below A to D sat. If it is, you don't need any filters. Filters won't do anything. If it starts clipping the A to D, typically from either the broadcast signals or maybe you live near a shortwave station, but most of the time it's going to be the AM broadcast. Then you can either try buying uh, AM broadcast notch filters, or I think the better approach is to pick a bandpass filter or make one yourself, you know, for the bands that you want, and then install the LNA. And the reason for that is, is this, the A to D on any receiver really cannot saturate. The second any signal starts saturating, it will create spurs and harmonics throughout this entire spectrum, regardless of whether you're tuning it there or not. And I'll do another video on that. It's what's called ADC overload. It's essentially where this, basically a signal coming into your A to D is greater than the highest A to D sat point. And the only way you can really determine that is you need to look at the entire swath of what the A to D is sampling. And that's exactly what this receiver is allowing me to do. So you might be working over here and say, I don't see anything, but what you're missing is that there could be some strong broadcast signal that's also coming down your coax. I had a person on Reddit who said, well, if I make a, dipole with a certain wavelength, um, only those frequencies will come down this, the coax. I really felt bad for that person because clearly they've never uh, been in any kind of real world thing and have lived their whole life in a physics book. Anyway, whoever that person was, here's proof that you're wrong. Um, here's a dipole that's tuned to a certain uh, 80 meter band. And look at that. I'm picking up way more signals than just 80 meters. I mean, I'm sorry, folks, but a dipole is not that frequency selective. All right, bottom line, A to D sat, I would stay under minus 20. I think it really obviously started saturating and creating tremendous spurs, I'll say, at minus 13. But I did see once it got to minus 20, the noise floor elevated. How am I doing that? 
I have a world-class signal generator, so please do not doubt these numbers. These are the numbers. End of discussion. Minimum detectable signal uh, on this guy, I achieved about a minus 110 dBm. Like I said, biggest concern I saw was the power supply, PLL clock spurs, but for under 200 bucks, we should not be too surprised. You want to have something that has none of that, you're going to need to drop probably over $7,000. Welcome to the world of low phase noise. Anyway, to see the whole HF spectrum for 200 bucks, my opinion, priceless. All right, I'll show a couple of videos of the thing at the end, but um, I think it's worth it. Go out and buy one today. Thank you. You know, he, he had this balance of being able to coach them hard and then love them harder. And, you know, my mom was the same way. Make it 25 over, but uh, I can make it over to your place, no problem.